Hello and once again welcome to Let's Explore. My name is Steve and today we're going to go and do something a little bit different because we're going to go and have a look at quite a big, quite a deep railway cutting and we're going to try and get some idea of how these impressive cuttings were actually excavated. Let's go and have a nose there. Now that is a snowball. Now correct me if I'm wrong, I didn't know that Eddie Hall lived in the Colville area. I tell you now, to push that about, you would have needed quite a few protein shakes yesterday. <laughs> Jesus, that must have took a, a few people to push that around, I'd imagine, but yeah. Well done, great effort, whoever built that. Alrighty then, so for today's video, uh, the video that you're watching today wasn't actually meant to be recorded today. I wanted to do this on a better weather day when there was no snow on the ground. The video I intended to make today was about Snibston Colliery and the actual village of Snibston itself, but because the colliery is closed due to what's going on in the world today, when I went out to start recording that video, I forgot all about that, so I couldn't get in there to get access, so I'm going to have to do that another time, which I was disappointed about. So then I thought, I know, I'll take the 25 minute walk over to uh, Huggleskirt, um, well at Donington Le Heath actually, and I'll, I'll make a video about the, uh, the quite deep railway cutting there that was uh, cut out to take the Ashby and Nuneaton Railway through between 1869 and 1873. But whilst recording that video, which could have been really good today, I hope you still like it anyway, uh, whilst recording that video, unfortunately I dropped my phone screen down in the snow. Well, of course, I couldn't get the, uh, the uh, touch screen to work for quite some time. So if you're wondering why this video is a bit shorter than usual and there's not a lot of footage, that is why, unfortunately. But hopefully we'll get a bit and I can narrate over a bit of it. Anyway, before we move on, uh, we're looking at this today courtesy of Google Earth and uh, the yellow spot there marks the cutting and the bridge that we looked at in the video today. And what you're looking at now, courtesy of the National Library of Scotland, is an Ordnance Survey map dated around about 1885 of this area. And what you're looking at there, just right of centre, it says station, and that is actually Hugglescott Station on the Ashby and Nuneaton Joint Railway. Now the bit we looked at today is to the left of there, because there's nothing left of that station anymore as far as I know. What we looked at today is just to the left of that, where it says FP, that means footpath, and that goes over that beautiful bridge that we looked at today. Didn't get a lot footage of that because of the phone incident that I had <laughs> and uh, just above that it says Donington Arms which was a public house and I'd like to think that the landlord between 1869 and 1873 made a lot of money when the navvies were down there building that railway he must have earned a fortune because as we know the navvies loved a good drink and after a hard day's graft digging that cutting out you would need one Right then, so I've now arrived at the bridge that goes over this impressive cutting. Now this bridge takes a public right of way and a farm track from uh, Donington Le Heath over to the village of Ellistown just in the distance there. And uh, this is a, a wonderful bridge as well, a great example of bridges back in the day of when this uh, railway was built between 1869 and 1873. It was another reason to come down here and get some good photos of it hopefully in the snow. But uh, the problem here is of course because of the snow cover we've got a bit of Indiana Jones in to do and so I've got to get down into the cutting. I have done this before in drier weather um, but uh, I'll show you what we're up against. Right then, so this is what we're up against this afternoon. As you can see, there's the track bed just down there. I'm standing in the centre of the track bed from above on this beautiful bridge that you're going to see shortly when I get down there. But uh, of course, it's tree-lined either side these days. It's amazing how quickly nature takes over, isn't it? You know, But uh, I think that's going to be the best way in just there, next to the end of the bridge. But uh, I have been down here in drier weather, but uh, there wasn't snow then. Anyway, let's get on with it. Right then, so here we go, our first bit of Indiana Jones in it for 2021. So, <laughs> like I say, I have been down here before. Um, in November, I think it was, last year, I came and had a little look. But I didn't have my phone on me at the time, I was just out walking the dog. But uh, this is going to be a little bit tricky. 
but uh, if we can get some good photos and footage it will be worth it because if there's one thing that snow does bring it does bring a lot of prettiness doesn't it you know so but uh, yeah this is going to be quite awkward but deep down if I'm being honest with you I do enjoy it <laughs> now getting back up here that is going to be probably more difficult I should have brought some gloves now anyway let me get on with it right so I'm getting there <laughs> we're not we're not too far but you know when when you've got this snow cover you can't see the bottom properly and it it is a bit of an issue to be honest but uh ah if we go that way swing around here <laughs> snow falling on my head there we're nearly there right we're pretty much underneath this impressive bridge now brilliant right that solved a bit of a problem isn't it we're here Right then, so before we talk about how the cuttings were excavated by hand by the navvies, another job of the navvies was also to dig the stanchion foundations out for these bridges and viaducts. Now the stanchions being the actual legs, in this case the brick legs of this bridge. Now I don't know how deep these go, maybe maybe a good two or three metres, I'm not really sure to be honest with you, but that would have been down to them to sort the foundations out and then of course the brick layers would have come along afterwards. Um, but you know, this being a relatively small bridge compared to many of the, the railway monuments we have in the name of uh, viaducts scattered throughout the country, but uh, it was all really hard graft and very tough for a navvy, but uh, you know, this was between 1869 and 1873, and you know, not like this day and age in 2021 when we moan, they just get on with it I suppose, but uh, fair play to them. Right, so here we are, I've made it down safe and sound. And uh, there's that beautiful bridge there that takes the public footpath over the top of this beautiful cutting. And you know, when you're down here, you get a sense of just how much hard work went into excavating a cutting like this. I mean, you know, just look at this bank here. I mean, this is, you know, that's a good 40 feet high, that is. And you know, when you're thinking about men now that were down here between 1869 and 1873 using nothing more than primitive hand tools, you know, pickaxes, shovels, wheelbarrows. But then you think about the actual excavation material or the stuff, as they used to call it, and where did it all go? Well, usually what they do in constructing a cutting like this, a lot of the time what they used to do is have barrow runs, which were basically planks put together up the side of the cutting you know and I know what you're thinking you're looking at that and you're thinking you're not going up there with a wheelbarrow but what they used to do they used to have a system where they'd have like a, a pulley up at the top uh, with a rope system so down here and there'd be a horse up there which was um, probably looked after by a young boy or somebody that wasn't strong enough or qualified to be a navvy looking after the horse. And what they'd have to do, they'd have to get the horse to pull the navvy and the wheelbarrow up the side of the bank. And it was a perilous task. I would not want to do it. And you know, it, you only needed to slip once. You could lose your life. It could be fatal. But uh, another way I think that they used to do it as well, what they'd sometimes do was lay temporary rails behind them and as the cutting progressed or the line progressed they would have a series of probably horse-drawn trucks or maybe a small steam engine actually being hand filled as well by the navvies to actually take the spoil away with them if that makes sense to you but a lot of the time they would use wheelbarrow runs and you know that, it's incredible to think of stuff like that in 2021 isn't it but I can just hear them and see them now at each side of this cutting taking excavated waste up to the top there and you know if that horse got spooked then you were in trouble <laughs> Okay, so before we had the technology to be able to take photographs with, we had to rely on skilled and very talented artists to show us what was going on back in the day in England when all this infrastructure was being built. And there was a particular artist known as J.C. Bourne that took a big interest in the way that uh, the railways progressed in their construction and the men that also built them being the navvies. Now this picture that you're looking at here, this sketch, I don't know if this was drawn by J.C. Bourne or not, the next one will be, but this just shows how dangerous the task of getting spoil up the side of these cuttings was to these men. They would tie a rope to the wheelbarrow and a horse would 
would pull the man and the barrow up and you had to make sure that you balanced well and if that horse bolted or got scared you had to make sure you jumped the side that the barrow wasn't going to go because you did not want that falling on you because you'd either die or be seriously injured. Okay, so this sketch is a sketch by J.C. Bourne and this one shows us a bit clearer as to what's going on in the actual railway cutting. You know, to the right at the bottom we can see the navvies working away. Uh, you can just about see one there with a pick. It is about to strike the ground with it if you can just about make that out. And to the left you've got the chaps going up uh, those barrow runs but of course this cutting is nowhere near as steep as the previous picture but it still highlights what a dangerous job it was and that job of taking away uh, the spoil in wheelbarrows of course was only reserved for the strongest of the men and uh, they believe me they would have needed to be strong as well uh, <laughs> they'd have needed to get some good tucker down the down the necks I know that much and probably wash down with a load of beer afterwards but uh, yeah incredible Okay, so what you've got here is a photograph that was taken during the construction of the magnificent Manchester Ship Canal. And work started on the Manchester Ship Canal in 1887 and it was completed in 1893. Now what you've got here is a very interesting photograph back in the day. Because what you've got there in the bottom of the ship canal is a gang of navvies. And uh, then you've got this chap at the front who's in charge of this oversized, by the looks of it, wooden wheelbarrow. And uh, you can just about make out there that the wheelbarrow at the front is connected to a, a really thick rope. But just pay attention to the chap who's in charge of that wheelbarrow. Now he looks like a really big strong chap doesn't he? And you know this job of being in charge of the wheelbarrow going up the side of these canal cuttings and railway cuttings. Um, you know, you had to be the strongest and fittest of the men to do that job. And to become a, a navvy in general could take up to a year to build your strength up to prepare yourself for that type of work. And what you've got here, just like the previous photograph, is a navvy with a wooden wheelbarrow. And of course, the first big difference you notice straight away when you look at this photograph is the difference in size of the actual wheelbarrow. But I think what's going on here is, unlike the previous photo, I think that chap would have been employed just to be in charge of the wheelbarrow all day getting rid of muck but this chap we're looking at now as you can see there's actually a shovel there that's stuck in the ground and I think this chap was actually digging filling his own barrow and getting rid of the muck himself but you know just look at the size of the forearms on him and you know when you look at that wheelbarrow you know made out of wood as well it's not made out of modern lightweight materials you know and just how overloaded it is and of course navvies back in the day used to mainly work on piecework so they got paid for how much they did so they were, they were always going to build up enough strength to get rid of as much muck as possible to earn more well, unfortunately that concludes today's video quite short but sweet today i think but uh, i really wanted to get out and make a video you know i've had the day off today because of the snow and you know i wanted to walk out the back door for a backdoor butchers and go and uh, explore and make this little video that i hope you've enjoyed but uh, the first video was a complete failure i'm gonna have to do that again on another day and I've had to cut this one short purely because I dropped the phone face down in the snow. Therefore, I couldn't uh, use the touchscreen facility until now, right at the end of it, when I'm almost home, it's dried now. Fortunately, fortunately it's not broken. But what I'm gonna try and do, I'm gonna try and put something together and narrate over a bit of it, which I intended to do anyway, but unfortunately, there's not been an awful lot of footage on, uh, on location shall we say so that's a bit unfortunate but at least I got out and I've enjoyed myself anyway it's a beautiful day all the same anyway if you enjoyed it please like subscribe and share and I will see you at the next one very soon take care of yourselves bye